Good morning, I'm Timothy Brissella, and this morning I want to introduce uh, linear programming to my Math 1324 class. And there are two primary methods of solving linear programming problems. The graphical method, which is what I'm going to introduce right now, that's why we uh, uh, reviewed graphing uh, systems of inequalities in two variables in the previous video because you're going to have to remember how to graph systems of linear inequalities. So uh, with, uh, so I said there were two primary methods, the graphical method, the other one is the simplex method. I'll say two methods of solving linear programming problems. The first one the graphical method, that's what you'll learn first. And then the second one, the simplex method. The simplex method uses uh, matrices, so we'll be seeing that in uh, upcoming uh, assignments. But now, first of all, I want to mention, what is a linear programming problem? Uh, linear programming is the process by which we try to find an optimum value for a function given certain conditions. Now, what do I mean by optimum? Optimum, it's either the, in most cases, it would be either, if you were looking at the optimum revenue, that would surely be the maximum revenue. And if you were looking at the optimum cost, well, I would say the lower your cost, the better. So that would be the minimum cost. So you're either going to be looking for a maximum or a minimum of some function. The function you're trying to maximize or minimize, in this example I wrote here, I'm minimizing. So the thing that we're going to be trying to find the minimum value of, that's called the objective, O-B-J-E-C-T-I-V-E, -E, function. And the inequalities, those are the constraints. Those are the constraints in which we're operating. We can't decide, well, let's plug in a 1-1. A, a, a one, one. Let's plug in a 1 for x and a 1 for y. Because if we plug in a 1 for x and a 1 pl for y, 5 plus 8, that's not greater than or equal to 40. So. You're trying to find the ordered pairs that satisfy this, uh, the, all of these inequalities and at the same time give you the minimum value of this objective function. One thing that has to be true for uh, linear programming problems, you must always have what are called non-negativity constraints. Non-negativity constraints. You must have those and it's not really a and that's not really a uh, hardship. This is used a lot in uh, production. This uh, concept of linear program is used a lot in production control. And if you're producing items, say X is the number of uh, uh, TVs being produced, and Y is the number of oh, uh, radios being produced, then you would never want to produce a negative number of those. So those non-negativity constraints are not a hardship by any means, but we ha must have them in order for this linear programming process to work. The graphed re region, the shaded region you get when you graph all of these constraints is called the feasible region. A feasible region, feasible region, is the shaded region you get from graphing the inequalities. Shaded region from graphing the inequalities. Now I'm not going to go through and solve this problem. I actually solved this uh, exact linear programming problem in another video. So if you just watch through, there's a video that starts off with this problem here, and I go through and solve it. The z equals 8x plus uh, 3y with those constraints. So now that I've introduced the terminology, the function you're trying to maximize or minimize is called the objective function. The inequalities are called constraints. And the non-negativity uh, non constraints, what quadrant is that saying? You're only looking at the region where x is greater than or equal to 0 and y are greater than or equal to The y values also have to be greater than or equal to 0. What quadrant would that be on an xy grid? Yes, quadrant 1. 
Those non-negativity constraints are saying that your graph is only going to be in quadrant one. And so with that in mind, I have a couple of examples of uh, feasible regions that I want to look at. Okay, here's one, the first feasible region. It's been, we drew the graph, someone drew the graph, they went through and uh, notice all the inequalities are solid line, the boundary lines are solid lines that are bordering the shaded region, and they found the corners for us. Does this uh, feasible region, does it keep going and going in any one direction? No, this is referred to as a closed bounded feasible region. So this is a closed bounded feasible region, one that doesn't keep going forever uh, in any direction. All the sides are bounded by solid lines. So I have something called the uh, cut point, I mean the corner point theorem. This is a, let me write that. This is closed bounded feasible region. Okay, here's another one. Let's look at this feasible region. Hmm, hopefully you can tell where the shading is. If not, I'm going to make the shading a little bit darker. Is this a closed bounded feasible region? No. It just keeps going and going. Notice it's not enclosed all the way around. It keeps going forever. And, uh, to the right and up. This is what I refer to as an unbounded feasible region. And your feasible regions you're drawing, they'll either be closed and bounded or they'll be unbounded. This is an example of an unbounded feasible region. Unbounded feasible region. And we have something called the corner point theorem that I want to state with regards to uh, closed bounded feasible regions and unbounded feasible regions for, okay, this is the corner point, let me, the corner point theorem. straighten that up a little bit. Sometimes I forget y'all are looking at this. Okay, for the corner point theorem, for a closed bounded feasible region, for a closed bounded feasible region, both maximum and minimum values of the objective function occur at corner points both maximum and minimum values of the objective function occur at corner points. So when I look at this feasible region right here, when I look at this feasible region right here, it's closed and bounded. So the biggest value for the objective function has to occur at one of these four corner points. Likewise, the smallest value of the objective function has to occur at one of those corner points. And you'll see my applying that uh, uh, this principle in uh, future examples when we go through and actually solve the problems. But closed bounded feasible region, the maximum and the minimum values must occur at corner points. Well, what about an unbounded feasible region? For an unbounded feasible region, Oh, let me check. And, uh, I hope I did it. Uh, yeah, it's still visible. For an unbounded feasible region, either a maximum or a minimum value of the objective function will occur at a corner point, but not both. Either a maximum or a minimum value 
of the objective function will occur at a corner point, but not both. With a closed bounded feasible region, you'll have a maximum, you'll have a minimum. For an unbounded feasible region, well here are the corner points, there, here, and right there. Those are big dots. Either the maximum uh, value of z will occur at a corner point, or the minimum value of z will occur, but not both. Now think about what's happening. If we just kept on with an unbounded feasible region, if we just kept on choosing points further and further out here, would the point 100, 100 be in the shaded region? Yes, it'd be out there. It'd be out there in that shaded region. You plug in 100 for X and 100 for Y, you get 2600 plus 2700. I think as we move further and further out into the feasible region, the Z value is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. What about 1,000, 1,000? Would the point 1,000, 1,000 be out here? Yes. Plugging in 1,000, 1,000, you get an even bigger value of Z. So I'll give you this uh, a hint right here. In most cases, for an unbounded feasible region, provided the objective function doesn't have any minuses or negatives, then the minimum will exist, the maximum won't exist. So let's make a note of that. For an unbounded feasible region, note, note, usually the, ma the minimum exists and the maximum doesn't. So, close bound a feasible region, check the value, take those corner points, plug it into the objective function. The biggest value you get is the maximum value of Z. The smallest value you get is the minimum value of Z. For an unbounded feasible region, take those corner points, plug them into the Z value. Convince yourself that the biggest value you get is not the maximum, therefore, the smallest value you're getting at those corner points would have to be the minimum. And that may sound like a big confusing mess to you, but once you watch the videos, I think they'll uh, uh, make it uh, much clearer. So, okay, I'm going to take a break. Bye-bye.